Welcome to another case study with Renew Education. We are going to look at a really difficult case for advanced uh, general dentists that want to really push the limits and see what they could do on something like this. This is very difficult. If not, this is definitely a pass. So it's kind of one of those things like if the patient is open to trying a few things, uh, you know, and you're willing to uh, stretch the boundaries a little bit, maybe this is a good case for you. Uh, if not, um, I'd say take a pass. There's probably too many miracles that you're asking for to happen in a case like this. Uh, this is how the patient first presents. Uh, they have a very difficult situation. Uh, they have dr very severe dry mouth. Things have rotted away. Teeth have been lost. Bone has been lost one, two, three teeth at a time. Now the patient can't chew anymore. So this is um, one of those cases that she's affected by different medications. Uh, she once had cancer, so it's kind of a hard, hard one to know how much she's gonna actually heal here as well, as well as the anatomy and the disease and everything else. So I'm only gonna talk about the upper in this video, but we will, be, or I will be looking at the lower uh, coming up, so look for the lower. Um, add some comments if you like. Um, but let's take a look at all of this. And I'm going to go through, there's a lot on the treatment assessment that you want to really look at uh, closer because there's some reds going on, there's a lot of oranges, and it's really something that this is exactly what the treatment assessment is for. Uh, to kind of give also not only yourself or an associate doctor, but really the patient a much stronger understanding of, wow, okay, I've, I've got this really difficult situation to work with and there's only so much that can be done. Do I really want to get involved in this, you know, spending money, time and effort and have a low expectation of outcome? And that's what I'm looking for, or at least that's what I want to educate the patient about because what I hate is when dentists and physicians in particular go into a treatment with all hopes high and you're starting something like this and the patient just assumes, especially for some reason in dentistry, if you take their money, they expect 100% success back and that is not the case when you get into advanced general dentistry such as this, especially full arch kind of cases. So let's look at this and see how uh, this can go. Uh, let's look at the treatment assessment. Um, on bite characteristics, we have a bunch of oranges. The vertical dimension is collapsed uh, almost entirely. Repeatable bite is bad. Those are oranges, the posterior support, the failed front teeth on the upper, that might've just been through decay, but anyway, Red on posterior support for sure, and that comes into the impossible uh, a possibility of intolerance that the patient might be experiencing. When it comes to bone density, uh, that's actually a green. That's about the only green thing I could see, and I, I don't go through the other characteristics here. But she's got oranges across the board with facial bone, bone constriction, uh, detached gingiva. She's a red on sinus and orange on the nerve area and a yellow, uh, yeah, red on ridge height. So she's red here, red with the sinus, she's going to the sinus, very poor sinus bone here. Um, yeah, very challenging across the board here. So let's look deeper at the CT now and see what we can see. Uh, let's start with that upper right side here. Gross decay, not surprising. Uh, failing crown tooth from decay. Um, well, let's look at that first molar in the mesial root area. I'm gonna go right between here um, to look at the bone quality. And it's a little bit tricky to do that because the teeth are so close. But there looks like there could be a ridge here to work with. That's not impossible. So you do have some room to work with. That's a seven. Uh, if we do the cross-sectional here, uh, that's another seven and a half. So you could get away with a little sinus bump. You could do an eight millimeter, um, 4.5 kind of diameter. 
eight millimeter length. If you want to go to 10, that's fine too. So that could actually work. Going a little bit back into that meso root, and this is where you have to graft. Don't, don't, and this is very difficult too because this is an older patient and the, I don't see any ligament here. It's not the best CT in the world. There's a little bit of movement in there, but if you lose that facial plate, it's going to be very hard to regenerate some of that bone into that area. These are big fat roots for, you know, just for anatomy. And look at how much that bone has gone away, meaning that the tooth takes up so much space on the lingual side as well as the facial side. And all we have is a sliver here. So you want to take that out as atraumatically as possible uh, and root by root. Socket graft that, socket graft this. Got a little bit of facial bone there, so that's a good sign. Just nothing here. Just the anatomy is horrible. Got a big constriction. You got um, you know, a little fenestration going on. You've got abscess. Just don't have anything. So you could, if this actually healed, once these teeth here have actually been taken out and grafted, you have a possibility of an implant at least here so long as she heals, and here. Okay, so that's that's all we could expect. Even if it's a 3.5, that would be very, very helpful. Once you cross the border here and you get into the anterior zone, look at how knife edge that is. That's just impossible to work with. I wish somebody could really solve this problem because it would really help. Unfortunately, when you do solve it, this part bulks so much out Patients feel really weird and they think they look weird and it's it may be a disaster even if you get the bone to work. Look at that constriction here on the lower. We're not talking about the lower right now, but man, this is why it all collapses here. So let's look. We're going to go into the 8 and 9 area right here. There's 8. Okay, there's nothing there. Let's go to 9. That's horrible. Yeah, there's, you can't really work with any of this. Once you get to this other, it looks like the canine area, uh, it's pretty blown out on the facial plate. And that's the problem. When she lost her teeth, um, all the facial bone is kind of wasted away. This is where you have to do a little guided tissue regeneration and try to create a membrane or Something here would be really nice to try to grow that bone back because this is an ideal spot to get bone. And it's it just seems, you know, unfortunate that she waited that long and that infected and ate up that bone. But man, I could really use this area right here. So let's go a little more posterior now because that doesn't look very friendly. Uh, now we're into just bad bone as well. Here's where we get a little bit of light. This is not good, but it's still better than what we've seen up to this point. And you've got about seven millimeters there, and you've got about five and a half. So if you can find a one-piece implant, or I know um, Locator or Zest Anchors has a small diameter implant, Maybe you do a little sinus bump here and put that small diameter implant in with a little locator attachment on there. That could work. They're about a 2.8 millimeter diameter. I uh, don't use those, so I'm assuming they work. Uh, they do sell them. But look at where you're at here. You're way back. You're almost in the first molar here. So that is not good. So how do you get bone before that? It's like it's impossible. So as much as you can get maybe an implant down the road here, you can get an implant here. You're not seeing anything until right about here. And that's that's a bummer. That's a real bummer because you're not going to ever, you know, you're not going to get any real stabilization. When we get into this posterior part here, let me get rid of these uh, markers here. Yeah, we've just lost everything here. So this is where you want to do a lateral sinus lift. So if you're going to 
tackle this left side, this is where things become more advanced. You're going to want to graft at least to here and see if you can get any kind of grafting into that, that medial part of the sinus wall all the way out here uh, would be really great. Um, very challenging surgery. But you could do it, somebody could do it. Uh, the chances of it growing in there are actually pretty good. Not gonna get a lot of width, but what we're trying to do is get some sort of implant over here. <clears throat> some sort of support would be nice. And then if you can graft it up here, and you get something there, you could really do uh, finally get something worthwhile, but <clears throat> this upper left side is really a challenge. So graph the upper right side, and then you you also do what you can on that upper left side. Upper left side dictates everything. If you can't do anything on the upper left side, uh, you're kind of stuck. Here's another possibility. What if you can only get a implant here? Let's say we get one here and then you get one here. You get your science lift, whatever it is. What you can do is put a locator bar right here. So now your locator attachment might come off here and then might come off here. And that that might be balanced enough. It's a little bit of a teeter-totter, but uh, you're not looking at a lot of millimeters, but you are extending the locator attachment enough to possibly get that four-legged stool between these two and that, so you get some better balance. It's certainly better than nothing. Um, so this is one of those miracle cases, like I said, this is a very advanced case. This is gonna take some surgical skills, gonna take a lot of time. This upper project is about a year and a half minimum in my mind to get all of that bone to heal. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be, seems more like a year, but this to me for some reason says a year and a half before you really start seeing some progress. That's because I think that this patient is probably not the strongest healer as well as this bone doesn't have a strong capacity to heal. So you have a couple combinations there. You gotta get her into a denture and hopefully that denture doesn't put pressure on and resorb all your graft material that you're trying to like keep in there as well. So that's our discussion for the upper. Um, please stay tuned or check out for the lower. And like I always say, Take a look at us and like us on Facebook. Look at us on and subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow for our live sessions on YouTube Live. And um, comment anytime you want. Ask questions. That's great. Appreciate it. Thanks.